Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to start with Garayan from Sky Sports News. Thanks, Joanne. Hi, Roy. Hi, Garayan. Uh, you've given me quite a problem today in where, <laughs> in, in where I start with this. Um, Roy, I just... What, why now and, and, and what has made you come to this d decision? Because... Um, you know, you don't need me to go through your career, but this seems like quite a moment, quite a day, quite a decision. Yeah, it is, of course. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it's a, a decision which hasn't exactly been taken overnight. It's It's been really brewing for a long time. And I've had in the back of my mind that uh, the right time to, to leave uh, the club and maybe even to leave football for a while will be at the end of this season. And I'm, I'm pleased, really, that uh, despite the speculation of the last two or three months we've still been able to keep things on a pretty even keel and it looks like we're going to be ending the season in a very dignified way and that was important to me I didn't want to end if you like this this very important period of my football career with Crystal Palace Football Club and in a way that wasn't in, in any way reflective of what we've been doing together over the last four years. Roy I read carefully your um your statement and, and you just uh, said something there about they initially people have just thought you know you are retiring but you don't actually mention that word and you've just yeah. alluded to something there about your future what's are you just stepping away from Crystal Palace would you like to continue in in, in some roles in football going forward you're I think the question is you're not retiring you're not done just yet no I mean one never knows I think it's a dangerous thing to do when you still feel good about yourself and you still enjoy your life in football, I think it's a dangerous thing to do to suddenly start making the bold statement in, uh, about retirement and this is the end of me, if you like, within the world of football. I really don't know. I've got to say that I'm certainly not leaving Crystal Palace uh, with the idea of putting myself back on the market and trying to get another job. I really am stepping down from the club and stepping away from football for a while. But who knows what the future will bring. I'm quite excited by the fact that I still have a, a, foot, a future that I'm looking forward to, whether it be in football or elsewhere, and I'll wait and see what happens. And uh, it's, a, it's a never say never moment, I think. Roy, when, when you look back um, with what you've done throughout your career, can you just maybe pick out, I think start with Crystal Palace, first of all, maybe some of the the highlights that you see, you know, there's a number of things a bit to mind. You know, it's, it's a club that you, you know, you, you, you played for, you're from Croydon. Um, you came when they were bottom of the league and you've kept them safely in the Premier League. What's maybe your highlight from your time at Palace? That's a very good question. And I think it's, in some ways, I think when you've been four years and it's been a very productive four years, I think both for the club and myself, I think, one does need to look at it more globally, as you you yourself have done. I think each year has been a, a challenge. Each year has been a, a tough one for us to compete against teams sometimes who certainly on paper look a lot stronger than us. But to keep ourselves away from the relegation zone during that period of time, if we discount those early weeks in September when I joined, I think that in itself is probably the thing which is going to stick most in my memory. There'll be individual games and I think the other thing that will stick in my memory is the is the pleasure that I've had coming to the training ground here every day and working with this, with this group of players. Uh, I've been well supported, as I say in the statement, by the club's owners and uh, uh, every other member of staff uh, that I've been working with. But it's been the pleasure that we've found working with these players every day. And of course, that's the thing that one will miss. But I'm afraid, you know, when you step away from a, a football club or you step away from football for a while you, and you've been in it for as long as I've been in it, it would be foolish not to think there's going to be some things you, you'll miss, but there'll be other things I won't miss. So hopefully those two things will, will even out along with the distance of time. And how important was your career perhaps abroad? You know, the fact that you are, you are multilingual, you've learnt not just culturally language, but football culture in a number of, of countries. How, how much has that sort of maybe added to your ability to, to manage with the longevity that you have? And also, what are your 
what are your fondest memories, perhaps, of of managing in in in, in countries such as you know Italy and obviously Sweden, where it first began? Yep, I think it's given me a, an incredibly varied life, and I think it's given me a very rich life, which you know perhaps I wouldn't have had if every month or year of my career had been spent in my homeland. So I'm, I'm very grateful, really, for the opportunities I was given. In particular, in Sweden, all those years ago, as a 28 stroke 29 year old to take charge of uh, a top division club there, that's the sort of type of opportunity that you've got to be very fortunate to get. And it doesn't seem to be coming up quite as often these days as it perhaps did in the 1970s. And it certainly set the tone, if you like, for my career. And it, it also meant that I was never afraid of going to another country or, or worried about, you know, when an opportunity came to to go to Switzerland and then then on to Italy and then later, of course, to places like Denmark and Norway and Finland, I've never feared that because I I know what it's like to, to go and live abroad and I know that I can be very happy living abroad. You're too kind, really, when you mention the languages. I think that you know they certainly fade with lack of practice, and uh, I would say you need to spend plenty of time back in Sweden and Italy and in Switzerland, brushing up my languages, but uh, it's been nice to learn them and nice to know that I could boast one day that I once could speak some. Roy, how, how important when, again, I, 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 given that you said you haven't quite at this moment, you know, called time on, on your career in football, but just how important is it that you that you managed England? That you have that on your CV with the fact that you've been in so many countries, the longevity of your career, but how important is it for you that you managed your country? You got to the pinnacle and you managed your country for four years. Yeah, I mean, I think I said at the time when, when David Bernstein, you know, was kind enough to really give me that opportunity. I said at the time, this is really the pinnacle of any career, you know, that I could have ever dreamt of, to be quite honest, because, you know, coaching and managing has always been my raison d'etre, really, and to get that opportunity to do that with, with England. I mean, I'd, I'd been able to to manage the Swiss national team, of which I was very proud of, and, and the Finnish national team, perhaps a little bit less so in the UAE, because that was a strange period of time, because there weren't that many national team games during my two years there. But certainly, if we take those European nations, I, I was really proud to have been the Swiss manager and the Finnish national team manager. But when, of course, the can't, chance came to manage England, that really was a, a present, if you like, that was too good to be true. And um, I can only hope that the four years I spend there you know, will be, with hindsight, seen as a, as a decent four years of work and a, a platform laying, if you like, for the big success I'm expecting you to have in the years to come. And and Roy, just given the fact, again, that you, you, know, you say you just want to step away for now, maybe see what happens. What in what perhaps would you like to do? Because to a degree, I suppose, you know, the world is is your oyster with the experience you've got, the experiences that you have. What what are there, what challenges or or something that you would like to do in football? You know, given you, you've managed, but I was looking as well, you know, you've 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 advised on numerous technical committees, etc. You wave for FIFA. What what in what in football would you like to do? Yeah, it's another very good question. And I've got to say that. I probably haven't given that as much thought as I as I should do because my thoughts at the moment are really more or less focused on some time to myself, some time where I don't have to go home sort of mulling over the selection problems or any problems that might uh, have arisen at the, at the club which require your management skills and, of course, the preparation of football matches. It would be nice for me to go to bed at night and not while having to think about who we're playing at the weekend and what problems that's likely to cause us. I'd like to travel. There's a lot of places that I'd like to travel to, which, of course, you can't do when you're in, <coughs> pardon me, full-time employment, training every day. It really is very much a, at least a nine-to-five job, if not more than that. So I'm looking forward to that. Of course, we'll have to wait and see how things pan out with the COVID crisis. But with... You know, any luck, I'll get a chance to do a little bit more travelling than I've been able to do. And then really, I'm just quite interested to see, you know, how how life is going to be for me and, you know, what I'm going to feel like doing. And uh, apart from the obvious, knowing that it's going to be 
not easy saying goodbye to something that you've been doing on a daily basis for 45 years. I'm also confident that uh, with my wife and my son's support, I'll, I'll find plenty of ways of not only occupying myself, but finding things that I'm going to really enjoy doing. Roy, just a, a final question for me, if you might, because I know there are lots of people that want to ask you many questions along the lines that I am as well. But just a question you, you alluded to in the last part of your answer there, Roy, about your about your family, about your wife and your, your son. Um, speaking to Mikel Arteta this morning, who spoke glowingly about you, he didn't know you were, you were, you were making the decision you were today, but we, he was asked about the importance of his wife and, and, and his children in just sort of just bringing him back to some kind of normality. Um, I'd imagine your wife since 1976 hasn't seen an awful lot of you. Um, what's just how important have, has that family unit been for you behind the scenes to allow you to have the career you had thus far? I think it would be a very dishonest football manager who doesn't pay tribute to the support and the love that he gets from his family and the, and the enormous job they do in, in, the, in the difficult moments, you know, because they, they are the ones who know you best. They're the ones who can read you best. And they're the ones sometimes who know what's necessary to say to you in order to either shake you out of black moods or maybe drag you down sometimes from the more euphoric moods. I've been extremely lucky. I mean, my wife and, and my son have never made any demands upon me. Um, Chris was very young when I went to South Africa to play, still very young when we set off for Sweden in 1976. He's had to accept schooling in, in, in Sweden. And then uh, when he's getting a little bit settled there, take him off to, to, to uh, Switzerland where he had to learn a new language and, and start again. And of course, my wife in particular, she's, she's backed up every decision I've made. I've been lucky, I think. I think most of the decisions I've made in form have been pretty good ones, but there's probably been one or two that weren't quite as good. And there's certainly one or two that I've taken, which have taken her away from areas where she's felt very comfortable and, you know, really enjoying life to have to start all over again. So um, they back me up very much with this decision. They think, like I do, that this is the right moment to step aside and see what see what the future brings. And the only reason I'm not talking retirement is because I've seen so many people with, with sort of the, the fanfare blazing talking now is uh, my time to retire and this is me finished in football, only to surface again somewhere in a in a fairly short period of time. So I prefer not to do that. But I'm I'm comfortable that uh, the future will have some interesting things for me to do. And most importantly of all, I am looking forward to spending a little bit more time with my, my wife and son and maybe listening to what they want to do for once because it hasn't happened very much in the last 50 years. Great stuff, Roy. Thank you very much for your time and congratulations on your career thus far. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Ryan. You. Thank you. We'll go to Casey Cass Katie Cassidy from Millie Productions. Good afternoon, Roy. It's a pleasure Thank to you. chat with you today, virtually. Good <laughs> um, I said it's a pleasure to be sat with you today, even if it's virtually. <laughs> That's very kind of you, thank you. Um, carrying on that theme somewhat of family and decision making, of course, with the support of your family throughout your career, but you've been at the heart of this Palace family now, your boyhood club. How hard has it been to come to a decision to step away from a position that you hold so dearly to a point does it have to become kind of head over heart? Yep, I'm afraid all these questions are very good when I can't say that it's been easy, but it's not one that's come upon me quickly. It's something which I've almost planned for quite a long period of time, which has given me the chance also really to come to terms very much with, you know, asking myself the question, what are you doing? Are you doing the right thing? Are you totally comfortable with this thought that you're going to, 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 to move away? And as you rightly say, I've been so well accepted and received here at Crystal Palace and it is a club which has always been dear to my heart that I suppose that's added a, a bit of extra spice to the situation and given me a little bit more to think about but um, the club's in very good a very good place at the moment I think that we're going to build on the last four years we're going to get stronger uh, the fan base is as you as you know and everyone knows is quite incredible and I'm just happy really to have been a part of it for these four years very happy for the way they've treated me, the way they've accepted me and Ray Lewington and the rest of the staff. And uh, 
obviously, I shall miss them too, but that's part and parcel, I'm afraid, of all goodbyes. Often when you say goodbye, you, you're going to miss something. Um, it was just touched upon as well about Arteta this morning. I mean, he cited you as a legend of English football um, and also touched on that what he thinks has been a remarkable career and a great example to him in his own career. Um, what does that mean to you to be respected by so many peers of the game? I think it's probably meant more to me than anything. I really do think that, that gaining the respect of your peers, you, you know, the players, of course, that you're working with, the staff that you work with, and I've worked with lots of staffs and lots of players, and then I've had a lot of colleagues you know, in different countries. I think if at the end of your time working at a club in that country or, or even at the end perhaps of your working career, if you've got people who are prepared to say that they've accepted you as a bona fide member of the bona fide member of the football family and someone whose whose work they've been able to appreciate, that means that means an awful lot because you know the the fanfares that you get during a career for various moments they can they can be very transitory. You know, they, they, you can have a moment where everyone's sort of lifting you up onto a platform which you probably don't deserve to be on and other times when they're probably trying to knock you too far down the ladder and, or the platform and you feel very upset about that but it, I think that the respect of your colleagues and the respect of the people you work with that you take with you at all times and it's very very nice that uh, uh, they're saying that the only problem I have with the word led you know a good friend Les Strong who is a very amusing man and Unfortunately, he always suggests that the term legend should be should be pronounced legend, and I'm not so certain that I'm happy with that one. We'll avoid that for the purposes of the rest of this presser. Um, mm. <laughs> Roy, the last two fixtures under your helm, Arsenal, the Arsenal, and Liverpool. Are these very fitting match rounds to see out your tenure here? In some ways, yes, because... You know, they're, they're high-profile matches and we're playing two of the very best teams in the country, two of the teams that really are, traditionally are, are always up there amongst the top four, five, six teams in the country. And, of course, teams with a, clubs with a fantastic tradition. So I suppose in that respect, you know, this is the Premier League and I've enjoyed these four years in the Premier League and perhaps it's right that we should be pitting our wits or trying to do our best against teams that, once again on paper, will be favourites when the game starts. But we can roll up our sleeves like we did in the second half against Aston Villa and show that even against teams that, on paper, maybe uh, pose a bigger threat, we can, on our best days, not only go out and match them, we can go out and beat them. So that's going to be our aim. That's what I'm hoping will happen. But um, you don't always get what you want to in, in life, in that respect, uh, but I can always hope. Um, I'm sure a lot of praise, grandeur, pomp and ceremony is not necessarily what you're after tomorrow, but how special will it be stepping out after what has been a tough and unprecedented season to say welcome back to those fans, but also farewell? Well, that's strange as well, I suppose, but of course that's just a, a quirk of fate that you know the government has decided quite late on to, to allow fans back in. So you're quite right to make the point that there's a, there's a bit of a paradox there that we've talked for so long about wanting to welcome the fans back that no sooner do I get the chance to welcome them back that I'm going to be waving goodbye to them. But it's a it's a fact of, of the situation and uh, I shall happily deal with it. And I'm rather hoping that the fans will, A, enjoy the game, but most importantly, I hope they're going to show their appreciation for the team. Because, you know, what this team has done, not just for a year, sorry, not a year, not for a season, it's been almost a season and a third, which has merged into one. I think what what they've done in that period of time is is well worthy of the, the fans' uh, appreciation. So it's going to be nice to see the players appreciated by the fans and nice for the players to see the fans back. Final question from me. Um, do you think you'll find it easy to step back after being busy for so long? Um, but of course, it seems your future is quite open. But are you looking forward to being the manager of your own time again? A manager what? Of your own time. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's something, of course, to which uh, I will have to learn to manage. I mean, because for quite a long period of time now, my life has been 
dictated almost in a military fashion. You know, I've known what time I've got to get up to get to work and I've known roughly what time I'm going to get home. So all those things would change and that would be something new for me. But my wife's had plenty of practice of that, of course, over the years as we've travelled around from country to country. So I'm sure she'll teach me how to do it because I'll need to find some of her patience along the way. Thank you, Roy. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. We'll go to Alex Howell, BBC Sport. Hi, Roy. Alex, how are you? Not bad. How are you? Good. Um, I've been lucky to spend some time with you and, and see you work and seeing the reception you get at places like Malmo. So how nice has that been for you to get those receptions at all the clubs you've been at? Yeah, perhaps it isn't all. <laughs> I wouldn't like to say that. Um, but I've certainly been blessed that there's been a lot more good receptions than, than bad ones. And there's been some quite outstanding ones along the way, celebrating sort of achievements that the team and the club had during my time with them as head coach or manager. So, yeah, I've those memories will stay with me, that's for sure. And they, they've certainly always been really appreciated. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But it's not something that you can expect. It's not something that you can rely upon you know people will give you the reception that they think you deserve and you just have to be very grateful if that reception is a positive one and I was just wondering when did you tell the players about your decision and how did that go I think two and a half months of press conferences have given them a bit of a clue when I've been sort of batting back questions all the time and suggesting that I'll give you my thoughts on the subject in my own time. I don't think there were too many of them that suddenly, when they found out, said, oh my God, you've, you know, you've really caught us on the hop here. Um, and I did that deliberately. It would, have been, it would have been nice in some ways to have given them more notice. I'd have had more chance perhaps to spend with them on a one-to-one -one basis and to, to thank them really personally for the work they've done rather than do it globally as we as we did this morning but i'll still have one or two chances before the end of the season to pull those people aside um so technically i suppose you'd have to say that the players found out just before you guys when the when the statement if you like uh, fell but i think most of them had, had a pretty good idea that it doesn't look like we're going to be working with Roy and May next year and just going into this final week um, of the season and could be the final week of your management career for now, um, are you just cherishing these moments every day, every training session as you prepare for these games? Well, I've got to say, I don't think I've had any sort of feelings in that sort of regard until perhaps today, you know, when it was it's a, it's a low-key training session because it's match day minus one. And, and, and secondly, you know, having actually made the formal announcement to the players and known that the formal announcement is going to reach the media this afternoon. I suppose it, that's probably been the first time I've ever felt that there was a slight sort of, not slackening off, but the, I don't know, a, more of a void, if you like, in, 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 in my feelings about it, because we've been so focused on the games and so focused on getting it right that we've really just put the, the subject behind us, just like the players are out of contract and, you know, still quite a few of those that Doug and Steve Parrish will have to deal with. Um, you know, they put it out of their minds as well. And we've tried to be 100% professional and to show 100% pride in, in, in our profession, really. You know, we, we believe it's important that every time you take the field as a football player or as a coach or manager trying to prepare that team, you've got to be giving it your 100% best and you've got to be giving it your all. And I think we've done that. And I'm really hoping that we'll see that tomorrow night as well because we, we showed certainly on Saturday what we're capable of. And I think tomorrow night will be a wonderful occasion to show that again. And just two, two more uh, from me. Are you looking forward to being able to say goodbye to the fans tomorrow and here in an atmosphere again? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, goodbyes are, are never been my forte. I'm much better at hellos than goodbyes. Um, but yes, I'm looking looking forward to it. But it will, it risks to be an emotional occasion, and I'm not good on emotional occasions. And 
on emotional occasions again, is it fitting you get to go out against one of your former clubs in Liverpool? Yeah, well, no, that was such a brief sojourn up there, really, that I think I, I, I could be accused of, of exaggerating if I called them one of my former clubs. I think it was about five or six months that I had with the with the guys up there. So, uh, uh, but yes, I mean, technically, it's it's one of my clubs. Technically, it's one of the Premier League clubs I've worked at. Um, it's against the champions, current champions of England. Uh, you know, a team really that have done so so brilliantly well over the last years under Jurgen Klopp. You know, it certainly will be a fitting match in the sense that you want to test yourself out one last time. Is the test you've been looking for? Try and try and deal with this lot up at Anfield. Thanks, Roy. It's been great to work with you, and good luck for tomorrow night. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. We'll go to George Sessions of Press Association. Hi, Roy. I'm trying to keep. Um, I just want to ask you quickly about about your right hand man, Ray. Um, obviously, been with you here for four years and, and plenty of other clubs. Um, just sort of wondered, you know, your sort of chance to pay tribute to him. I, I imagine he's been a, a real rock by your side over the, over the last couple of decades, probably. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not quite two decades, but I mean, obviously. You know, the time at Fulham, then the time in England, now the time here, they, they've been wonderfully profitable years in, you know, for me personally, working alongside him, he's, he's been incredible in everything that he's done. And, you know, we have worked pretty much in tandem for a long, long period of time now. And he and Dave Reddington and Dean Kiley, they, they deserve an awful lot of credit for the preparation that goes into our football matches because they take on such a lot of responsibility. But, you know, Ray... Ray is a top-class football person, um, a wonderful, a wonderful coach. You know, really at the very, very highest level, and with incredible experience, both as a coach and as a manager. So, I've been very fortunate that you know I've been able to count on him alongside me because he's been not only helpful in terms of advice and with his opinions and you know the sounding board that every manager needs, he's also been exceptional in the work that he does on the training field with the players and that's helped us in my opinion to become a better team and to to retain that Premier League status which has been so important for us over these last four years. And just finally from it you kind of mentioned it's, it's a decision you've been thinking about for a while I wonder did sort of lockdown especially the kind of start of that kind of give you a tiny bit of an insight into what retirement away from full-time football would be? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, to be honest, when the when the real lockdown began some while ago, where you really were virtually imprisoned in in your in your house or your apartment, I think that would have been the time, I suppose, to start thinking. Well, this might be my life one day when I when I stop working full time in football. But I don't think I really did think that much about it because I was so convinced that the league would start up again and that we would finish that season, and that I would you know, see out my contract by also getting through the the next season, as it were. Um, so I think it will be uh, something which I'll have to confront anew. Uh, I'm not certain that the lockdown experiences would have helped as much as perhaps they, they, they should have done had I given it more thought at the time. Thanks, Roy. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you, George. Thank you. We'll go to Jackson Cole of Talk Sport. <clears throat> Hi, Roy. Sorry, I'm having issues with my webcam, so uh, you won't be able to see me. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, congratulations on uh, such a great career so far. Um, which managerial position would you say you learned the most, both about the job and about yourself? Well, I mean, that's a really good one. I think probably... Um, the closest I could come to really giving an answer to that would, would, would be when I left Sweden after all those years, you know, the, the 12 out of the first 14 years spent at three Swedish clubs and a hiatus here at Bristol City in England in between times. Um, I think when I went to Switzerland, I think that was probably the, the first time that I was confronted with something very different in terms of mentality, culture and attitudes and, and thoughts really from the from the owners of the of the club about how they expected their manager or their head coach to behave. I think that was that was the first time I think that I really thought this is going to be very very different to what I've uh, you know, 
uh, <coughs> probably experienced before. Um, and then, of course, Inter was similar, I think, you know, going from Switzerland, where I, I did quickly come to terms with what it was about, being a, a head coach in, on a, in a Swiss team, and uh, then moving on to coach the national team. I actually felt pretty comfortable then, really, about what Swiss football was about, and, you know, the differences between what the clubs in Sweden had taught me and now what the clubs in Switzerland have taught me. So the next really big step, I think, which opened my eyes to a different world was was going to Inter um, because suddenly I found myself coaching a club really that not only interested the people in Milan, it interested the whole of the country. And what's more, uh, the mass media were always in a frenzy to get stories about the club and about the players. And I had to sort of confront... Um, a sort of pressure, if you like, from the mass media that I hadn't really been used to, perhaps, to that extent in my career up to then. So I think I'd have to cite Malma Tenerchetel as the, the first, if you like, uh, epiphany and then an even greater epiphany after I left Switzerland to join Inter. And yeah, you mentioned a bit earlier about the things you're going to miss, like um, teaching the players and so forth. Is that what you'll miss the most about managing in the Premier League? Did you say teaching the players? Yeah. <laughs> well, how, how would you describe it? I don't, I don't quite know that I would go quite as far as that. I think the, I think that uh, when you get to the level we're working at, you, you're you very much trying to get the best out of players and trying to make certain that they can bring their already considerable skills to the match and make certain that they're their skill can help the team become a better team and win. So I don't, I don't know that I've regarded myself as a teacher here, but I would like to think that I and Ray Lewington together, we have coached the team and we, we have tried to you know, make people realise what skills they do have and how they could sometimes maybe use them a little bit better, not least of all for us to be able to win as a team. So, so uh, I probably would accept an accolade for that, but I think the word teacher might be a bit strong. Okay. Um, well, um, how about the, uh, what will you miss the least about managing in the Premier League? I don't know yet. I mean, it's it's a stressful job. There's no question of that. I think I've learned over the years to deal with the stress, so I'm not suggesting for one minute that my decision now to step aside is because I can't take the stress or I, I find the stress you know, something which is too much for me, far from it, really. I think, you know, I'm one of those people who probably thrive on a little bit of stress and a bit of tension. So that's not going to be a problem as such. Um, I think that the thing that you won't miss so much is defeats. I mean, that that is something which you rather hope as you get older and you, your CV starts to pile up a little bit and maybe look a little bit better and... Maybe your reputation in the game grows somewhat. So, you know, you you feel maybe that, well, I've earned the right now to lose a few games because, you know, I've got so much behind me. But it doesn't work that way. I'm very sorry to say that the defeats that come my way now with Crystal Palace hurt me every bit as much as those defeats in, in the early part of 1976. I was rather hoping that there's something in football that would provide a shield for you. But I've realised that doesn't exist. So the thing I certainly won't miss is waking up uh, during the night uh, after a game that we've lost and then waking up next morning after a bad night's sleep, once again trying to come to terms with the fact that we've lost uh, and then having to perhaps wait another 24 hours before you can at least get back onto the field with the players at the training ground and to some extent exercise the feelings that uh, you're feeling. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And yeah, just finally from me, uh, it's to do with England. Obviously, in the coming days, Gareth Southgate, he will name his England Euros squad. Can you tell us just how difficult it is to tell top players who have played well for England that they haven't made it into the squad for a major tournament? Obviously, I've some, I think of Ashley Cole just before the 2014 World Cup. I mean, I think it all boils down to the famous aphorism, there's no easy way to break somebody's heart. I mean, that's that's how it is. You know, when you're, when you're telling a player that 
set his heart on representing his country and possibly has played a big part in the qualifiers and the matches leading up to the tournament that he hasn't quite made the 23. It's a, it's a really, really nasty situation to find yourself in. It's one you sign up for when you become England manager. You realise this day is probably going to come. Um, there are more than 23 players in England. There are, there are more than 23 potential England internationals. So there's going to be a, a list of them uh, that you're going to have to deal with. But it's not a, it's not a pleasant job, that's, that's for sure. And unfortunately, it can be one that stays with you sometimes. Because if you're unfortunate enough to maybe go to a guy that you really appreciate his work and you appreciate him as a human being, and you've seen the real disappointment on his face when you've said, sorry, not for you on this occasion, you know, that, that, that can live with you for a little bit because uh, no one really likes to be the bearer of that type of type of bad news. But um, it's, a, it's a job that Gareth's done for a long time with the under-23s before he actually became England manager, of course, with Middlesbrough as manager of that club. So he's got all the experience in the world for dealing with it. But if you were to ask me today, would you like to swap places with him doing that? I would say to you, absolutely not. I can just wish him well with it. Uh, that's it from me. Thanks so much, Roy, and best of luck with everything in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. That concludes the broadcast section.